Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So this is going to be the last video on the creating a crypto tracker application using Python series. So in this video, we're basically going to finish up the code that we started in this series. So if you haven't already watched the last two videos, I recommend you do. And I'll be linking them in the description as well as right now in the video. So just to give you guys a gist of what we did in the last session, we basically created the basic UI and all its components. Um, so we created a search box, two list box, uh, and some buttons. So what happens here is that um, the app basically starts up. It loads in the different crypto coins available from the API uh, and then stores them in a variable. Um, those will then be displayed over here. And then this search box will allow you to filter those. And then when you select uh, some of those cryptos, you can then track or delete them. Cool. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to start with coding up the update search results function, which we left off last time. So what this function is in charge of doing is that um, when the application starts and it basically creates all the widgets, uh, a separate thread starts, which basically initializes the load crypto data. So it's a function running... Um, on a separate process to the main one uh, and what that does is basically grabs all the available coins and then stores it in a data frame in the crypto list variable and then there's a function right here called update search results so what this is supposed to do is basically get all the data that was just downloaded and then populate it in the list box so that's the crypto list box right here so we'll be doing just that in here so first off um, what we're going to be doing is going to do this function is actually a multi-purpose function so apart from just displaying um, all of the coins available it will also display a filtered view um, when the user types in a search term into the search box as well so in order to get the search term first what we're going to do is get the data from the search variable here that we created earlier so search term equals cell dot uh, search bar dot get that will get the data and then we'll use dot lower to basically get a um, lowercase version of that so that we have everything in lowercase. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take all the content from the current list box and clear it just in case um, it is already written with something else in advance. So we're going to do self dot crypto um, list box and then dot delete zero comma tk dot n. That will basically delete all the items that are already in the list box. Now that we have cleared the list box and it's ready to be populated, we're going to basically, if the user has typed in something in this, we're going to filter the data frame down to anything that matches this keyword. And obviously, if it's empty, then it will show all the keyword, all the coins as is. So we'll do filtered cryptos equals self.crypto list. Now, self.crypto list is a data frame, which basically stores all the coins that we downloaded from our API. And we're just going to query it. So we're going to write an F string here. And we're going to say if the name dot string dot lower, which means we're going to convert the all the names of the coins into a lowercase. And then we're going to say dot uh, dot starts with. So if that um, if that coin, uh, the name of that coin starts with the following characters and the following characters are just going to be a search term. Um, search term uh, then we're basically going to filter the data frame down to only coins that actually start with this search term anything else will basically be excluded now that we have our results basically consolidated into this filtered cryptos variable we just display those results in the list box and obviously if the user hasn't typed in anything and this is empty it will just show all the results so it will be unfiltered basically so it kind of serves a two-in-one purpose. So to display the um, the data in a list box, we have to iterate through this data. So we're going to write a loop. So for i, comma, filtered uh, crypto in filtered uh, cryptos dot iter rows. Now what this is doing is basically each row will be assigned to this filtered crypto variable. And this i will give us an index as well if we need it. And then for each thing, we basically do self.crypto list box, which is where we're inserting the data, dot insert, tk dot end, and then basically what we want to insert. So I'm going to basically take the row, we'll put the symbol first of each crypto. I'm going to make sure it's in uppercase. Then I'm going to put a dash next to it. 
then I'm gonna put um, the name of the crypto next to it. Now, given that this filtered crypto is each row, we have to select the column as well. So this is the symbol column. This is the name column. Then I'm putting a dash next to that as well. And then for final things, we'll just add the ID in there as well. So if I now, um, this should basically be our update search results function done. If I now run our latest application, uh, okay, hold on, it's given us an error. There's no attribute to crypto list. Um, oh, I've typed it wrong. One second. Let me just update that. Crypto. Um, crypto. Okay, hopefully that has fixed most of the typos. It's not attribute to crypto list box. I've spelled it wrong in the initial thing, I think. So crypto yeah that's my bad just update this to the correct spelling here and then if i do crypto list box okay i think that should do oh crypto okay there's another one as well here crypto list crypto list try that seems like i have a problem spelling okay so basically the application is running now and what it's doing right now is basically downloading the results and we have another error great um has no attribute to uh what line is this on line 17 load crypto data Okay, let me just search for this and then I'll update it to the correct version. So this will be changed to um, crypto and then we should have another one of these. Okay, that should do it. Hopefully, let's run it again. And now you see that the application is loading some data and when it's done loading, the obviously the loading bar goes away. And then we have a list of, you know, all the coins that are um, available for us to scrape. Then if we use the search box, we can type something like Bitcoin. And then as you can see, all the results are not updated to only contain um, results that start with, uh, the, the coin starts with Bitcoin. You can do the same for Ethereum, for example, and it will do the same. If you clear it, um, it should go back to the default. Perfect. So that's basically part one of the things done. We're now able to select different cryptos that we want to track. Um, let's code up the other functions as well. So as part of the other functions we're going to do, uh, the next function we're going to update is the select uh, cryptos function. So what this should allow us to do is basically take all of the selected cryptos that were selected from our left list box and then uh, track them. So what we're going to do here is create a new variable called selected indices and then assign that to self.crypto list box uh, dot current selection. So what this will do is it will take all the selections from the list box that um, we picked the cryptos from and then give us all the indexes uh, to those uh to those selections. So if it's the first item that we selected, it will be zero. If it's the first and second, then it'll be zero and one, and so on and so forth. Then we will basically create another variable called selected cryptos. Um C R Y P G S. Make sure I spell that right. And then we'll do like a list comprehension here. So basically for each of the indices in here, we're gonna get uh the uh selected crypto. So self dot crypto list box dot get selected indice uh for selected indice in selected indices so basically what this gives us is uh it's going to get the value of the um the selected uh indice so for each of these indices so for each of the indexes 
of the selected cryptos it will get the the value so it will basically get this thing the name uh the symbol dash the name dash the id for each of the things um that we have selected now what we'll do next is um, we'll double check if the user has actually selected any cryptos at all so we'll do if not selected cryptos which means if the user has not selected any then we'll do a message box here uh, and then do dot show warning no selection and then we'll put the message as please select at least one crypto and then we'll just type in a return statement so none of the code below this will be executed now that we have the selected crypto uh, values and the indices we'll loop through them and then for each one of them, we're basically going to insert them into the list box on the right, which the list box on the right basically shows all the cryptos that we want to track and um, basically the ones that we can uh, display on the right hand side. So we'll do for selected crypto and selected cryptos. We basically do self dot selected cryptos list box, which is the list box on the right. And then we will insert the uh, selected crypto. Cool. So now that that's all done, uh, what we're going to do next is we're basically going to take whatever cryptos uh, have been added to uh, to the right side or have been added to be tracked. And we're going to save that data into a CSV so that the next time the, the application is loaded up, um, we can load that data into the application from the CSV and the user's choices are basically saved. So we'll do all selected cryptos as a variable and then we'll do self.selected cryptos list box and then dot get 0 comma dk dot n. This will basically get all the um, cryptos that we've added to our right hand side list box. Then um, we'll do selected crypto crypto ids and we'll do a list comprehension here now given that we have um, all of the values of the selected cryptos we know that the id is basically in the last position of this string that we have and each thing the symbol the name and the id is separated by a dash uh, space dash space so we'll basically use that logic in order to be able to get just our ids so we'll do selected uh crypto dot split so we're taking the string we're splitting it on the dash uh, space dash space and then we're basically keeping the minus one minus one means keep the last character instead of the first so we're basically keeping the last character so which will give us the id and we're going to do that and we're going to make sure we strip as well to get rid of any white space and we're going to do that for each selected cryptos in all selected cryptos Cool. That will give us just a list of the crypto IDs that were selected. Now that we have that, we're going to create a data frame with that. And then we'll call that data frame or DF selected cryptos. And then we'll assign that to um, DF selected cryptos. And then we'll assign that to self dot crypto list, which is basically, if you remember, we had a data frame already, which we which has all of our coin names and ids and symbols and that's the crypto list so we're doing that and then we're going to query uh and we're going to put in the id dot is in and then in an f string we're basically going to say selected crypto ids now what this is going to do is it's going to take the full data frame right the one that contains the symbols names and ids for all of the cryptos and then query uh, and keep only the rows where the id matches um, the ids from this these selected cryptos so that will give us like a filtered uh, data frame which will only contain the ids of the select selective cryptos and the rows that belong there so once we have that we're basically going to do self dot selected crypto ids uh and we're going to assign that to df selected cryptos the data frame we just created and then take the ids column from there and then do dot to list 
which will basically we're going to use this variable later on in other functions in order to be able to tell which uh cryptos we're currently dealing with so once we're done with all that we're just going to take the data frame that we had so df selected cryptos and then do dot two csv selected cryptos dot csv and set index to false so what this is going to do is it's going to take all of the cryptos that the user just selected um, and then it's going to save that selection into a CSV file, which will basically uh, keep track of the cryptos that the user selected each time. Now, every time they make a change, this file will also get overwritten, so it will be up to date every time. Now that we're done with that, uh, what we can basically do is test this out. So let's run off. Uh, give it a second to load. Okay, now let's just do one, two, three select cryptos and boom it actually shows up on the right now the interesting bit is to see if it actually saved in the file we have a new file called selected cryptos and yeah uh looks like it's done the job Z zoc01 coin bitcoin dogs and zero mee -E. yeah perfect cool so it's done the job as we expected it to which is great let's run again and see if um now what we want it to do is every time we run it we want it to take the data from that file we just saved in the csv and then if there's anything in there we want it to display it on here already so that the user doesn't have to reselect their previous choices so in order to do that um we're going to actually need to code up one of the functions uh which was named load selected cryptos cool so we're, what we're going to do in this function is we're going to use a try and catch statement here because if the user previously didn't um, save any preferences then obviously this code will error out because there will be no file so we're going to try and load in a selected we're going to try and create a variable called selected cryptos and that's going to be assigned to the file that we just saved so pd.readcsv selected cryptos.csv now in the case that this errors that just means that there is no selections from the past which means the user hasn't loaded um tracked any cryptos yet so if if it is that they did then it, the file will get loaded and then we update the self.selected crypto ids variable with our freshly loaded in um data frame and we'll basically just take the ids from that put it in the list Cool. So once we've updated the selected crypto IDs variable, we also need to update the results in the list box. So we'll just write a simple loop to do that. So for selected crypto, uh, comma I in selected crypto, uh, selected cryptos dot iterose, we want to basically do self dot selected cryptos uh, list box, which is where all the um items are going to be placed and then we insert all the uh data from the csv file so that the user can see their past selections uh basically you're going to do the same thing here selected crypto symbol dot upper plus base plus uh selected crypto name plus base plus and then selected crypto ID. now that will display all of the cryptos nicely and only thing left to do is actually just handle an exception for this try so we'll do accept exception as e and then we'll just return because in the case that there is nothing to load in uh we don't want to do anything because we don't actually need to take any actions in that case let's run this code and see if the app actually remembers cool and as you can see um i just ran this freshly and it actually remembers my choices which is great uh let's just add another one in here adventure and okay, select cryptos and by close this and reopen it it should also remember adventures as one of the cryptos and it does perfect cool so that's basically most of the sort of loading in and saving stuff complete now what we're going to do is deal with uh, another function called delete selected cryptos which is a basic one what this will basically allow us to do is uh, take any cryptos that we've selected that we want to delete and no, no longer track so like before whenever we're selecting the cryptos and getting the selections we need the indices or the indexes so we'll do self dot selected 
encrypt the list box the current selection that will basically give us the indices then we'll do if not selected indices which means that if there is no selected um items it's going to do a message box display a warning and we're going to say no selection please select at least one crypto to delete because in case the user presses it by accident uh once we're done with that let's do a simple return and then if it is that there was stuff in the selected indices which means the user wants to delete some stuff we do for index in and then we'll do reverse uh selected indices so that we go from uh the other way around um we basically take each item from these indexes and then delete it from the list box so self dot selected cryptos list box dot delete and then that index now that will take care of the gui itself but we also need to now update the file to basically let it, let it know that the user has deleted um a specific crypto or multiple specific cryptos that, no, that they no longer want to track so let's do that let's do dating the csv file and then we'll do a new variable for that remaining cryptos assign that to self dot selected crypto list box dot get zero comma dk dot n that will basically uh get all the remaining cryptos that we have uh then we do get the ids remaining crypto ids equals crypto basically this is the same kind of method so we're going to split based on space dash space and then keep the last item and strip it which will give us the id uh for each crypto in the remaining cryptos cool then um based on the data that we've just obtained we're going to create a data frame uh called df remaining cryptos and that's basically going to be querying the crypto list so we'll do self dot crypto uh crypto list uh dot query and then we're just going to do an f string and keep the similar logic id dot is in remaining crypto ids now the reason why this will work is because we're basically taking all the um cryptos that are in the uh, selected cryptos list box and at this point if the user has deleted anything it would already be removed from that list box so uh, it's it's all up to date and then we're just updating this data frame now to only contain ids that are in that list box after deletion so yeah um we're also going to do self selected crypto ids we're going to update that with the new ids after deletion so .id to list and then lastly we basically need to save this data frame to the csv and we overwrite it basically and then set index reports this will basically make sure that the next time that the application is opened up our application knows uh, that specific cryptos were deleted and that will just keep track of all of that cool run this up again hopefully no errors and then what we're going to do here is let's just delete one coin and bitcoin dogs delete okay they've disappeared close this off run all again and boom actually works so this mean this just means that the csv file was updated successfully and now it remembers that we you know deleted two things last time and we only want to track these two perfect now for the actually actually for the butter and bread of this program which is actually tracking the cryptos um so this function actually we're going to keep pretty light all it's going to do is it's going to fetch the data for the selected cryptos and uh yeah it's just going to fetch it and store it in a variable so we're going to create a new variable in the object itself or a new member called crypto.data i'm going to assign it to fetch historical data which is uh one of the you know, data retrieval functions we made in the first tutorial and all it does is it takes in a list um yeah, it takes in a list of crypto IDs for which you want historical data for and then gets the last 14 or 7 days of data and returns it. So 
basically what we will need to provide here is a list of uh, cryptos we want data for now if you remember we we were updating the selected crypto ids variable every now and then um this is what it's going to be used for so we're going to use the self.selected crypto ids variable here so that it can retrieve data for the uh, historical performance of these cryptos and store it in this variable then once the data is actually retrieved we're going to have a separate function that will deal with visualizing this data in a separate tab it's going to be called show crypto performance this is where we're going to use matplotlib and everything to basically take data from a boring little uh, data frame or arrays and then display it in a nice visual format cool so i believe this is actually going to be the last function that we code in here so let's try and get this out of the way let's do so crypto performance argument just going to be self now first things first we, we need a new window to pop up so we'll do self dot visual screen assign that to tk dot pop level and then we'll make sure we pass the main window to it as well this will just give us a separate window to the main screen that we have uh, now in this in this main screen we're going to have figures and canvases which are related to matplotlib and these figures and canvases will basically just store the line chart and other visuals that we may have uh, now every time we update some data uh, or re-click on track uh, on the track button we want to make sure these canvases and figures are cleared so that we can redraw upon them so we're going to check if the there's if the if there is an attribute to figure and if there is then we're going to clear the figure and we're going to do the same thing for the canvas as well I'm going to check if it already exists and if it does we're going to do self dot canvas dot get tk widget dot hat dot get cool now obviously some of these elements haven't already been created um but just keep in mind that all this does is it checks if there is already something on the canvas and figure and if oh, if there already is then it will just clear it up for us to redraw on it now um the first thing we're going to do is actually create a table in Tekinta and that table will hold um specific information like the coin name the current price the high low price change all-time high and all-time low so I'm going to create an array here and I'm going to call that table headings. That's just going to be a list of all the headings that I want on my table. Then I'm going to create another list down here and that's going to be all the keys in my um, dictionary. So let me just copy this across to save some time and I'll explain in a second. So if you look at it now, basically this is going this is going to be a list of all the headings that are displayed on the headers of the of the table. On the GUI itself and this this right here is basically all the different keys for the dictionary that contains the data so now what we're going to do next is actually um, fetch the data for the overview because we've only so far we've only got the historical data uh, we haven't got the overview data the overview data is what's going to contain the overview data like the current price, high, low, price change, etc, etc. So to grab that, we're just going to use a function we coded in the first tutorial. So we'll do overview data equals fetch crypto data. And then we're going to use a list here uh, and just going to self dot crypto uh, data dot keys uh what that would do is we'll basically um grab the data for the currently selected uh cryptos cool so let's see what we what we're gonna do next is uh create a table within Tekinta. so this data is gonna have the overview data for us uh for all of the cryptos that we're currently selected now we're just creating the table which we're going to place this data on so table equals ptk dot preview and then we're going to tell it where to place so we're placing it on the visual screen we need to tell it what the columns are going to be so that's going to be our table headings uh, list and then we make sure we show the headings as well 
now for each of the uh this will basically just create like the structure of the table it won't actually show the labels in the column heading so we actually need to insert them so we'll do for table heading in table headings so we're going to iterate through this list and for each of those things we're going to go to the table we just created and then we're going to insert a new heading so the heading is going to be the table heading and the text will be the table head cool now what we want to do next is basically take the overview data and create uh, and place them in rows under those headings so to do that, we're going to iterate through the crypto overview data. So we'll do for row in stop dot crypto overview data uh, self dot table dot insert. So just like how we do in a list box, and uh, I'm going to make sure there's a empty space and tk dot end, and then the values that we're going to insert are basically going to be as follows. So we're going to do a pound sign and then plus str um, row key if the instance of the key belongs to either int or float. Now what that basically means is that we're going to add a pound sign before the uh, before the data uh, data that's being inserted if it's either an integer or float type data otherwise we're just going to display a string version of that data and we do that for all of the key in keys that we receive cool and then once we're done with that we basically do dot table dot pack which will basically place our uh, our table nicely in the middle of the screen let's run this quickly and I'm going to go ahead and delete my current choices and we'll just go with Bitcoin for now so that we can see something that actually has a bit of data. Click on track cryptos uh, and we have an error. Okay, okay, we've made another typo here. Great. Um, crypto, got it, crypto. Okay, let's run this again and I'm hoping we don't run into a rate limit because otherwise it's going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, track cryptos. We have another error. Uh, name instance is not defined. Okay, let me double check. So that should actually be is instance instead of instance. Cool. Cool. So as we can see, we have a nicely shown table, which basically shows us the coin, the current price, the high, low price change, all time high and all time low. And as you can see, it's also formatted it with the pound sign at the start for any um, any item that basically was an instance of a integer or a float. Perfect. So now that we have this sorted, what we're going to do next is actually create the um, line chart as well. And that will basically conclude the tutorial. So to create the line chart, we'll create the figure and axis um, variables, and then assign that to plt.subplots. Basically, that will just give us a blank canvas to draw on. Then for, for each crypto ID in the crypto data keys that we just downloaded, we're going to plot on the axis, the self dot crypto data, the for the relevant crypto ID, and we're going to grab the dates. So that's the x axis. Then we're going to basically copy and paste the same thing because we want to do the same thing for that same crypto ID. But as the y axis, we're going to use prices, and then as the label, which is going to be like the um, index, which is shown later. We'll just put in the crypto, crypto underscore ID. Cool. Now the only thing left to do is nicely decorate this. So I'll do x dot set title crypto performance over the last 
seven base or do x dot set x label x so x label the x label is just going to be the dates or the days and then we'll update that with y label just going to price in gpp and then we display the legend as well so that we can see which line corresponds to which crypto and then last but not the least we're just going to um, create a canvas variable within this object assign that to figure canvas tk aggregator so that we can take the figure and then basically display that on our screen so we'll do the figure is in self.fig and then we want to display on self visual screen then we're gonna do self canvas dot draw and then lastly we're just going to place it so self dot canvas dot get tk widget dot pack gonna start it from the top set fill to both and expand to true so that we can scale according to the size of the window cool let's run this up and hopefully we should now have a fully functioning crypto tracking application click on track and we have an error uh okay why do it keep spelling this wrong crypto okay it seems like i spelled it wrong quite a few places um it's gonna be crypto okay fix this as well while i'm at it So let me run this and hopefully this time I wouldn't have spelled anything wrong or made any errors. Track cryptos and boom, actually works. Perfect. So as you can see, we have tracked successfully the price of uh, the overview of crypto um, for Bitcoin. We can see a nice little line chart as well. Now, obviously, you can select uh, multiple cryptos in here and it should give you the data for both that you've selected so if i do that then click on track cryptos we have a nice little table for the overview of both bitcoin and ethereum and then we have a nice little line chart showing us the data as well obviously ethereum is a lot lower than bitcoin which is why we see the discrepancy over here anyway i hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial and have learned something new through this series if you guys have any ideas please leave them in the comments as usual guys please help me reach my um, subscriber target of 100,000, and i'll see your beautiful faces in the next one peace